Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and this is my YouTube channel, Life in Motion. Now today I'm asking a very simple question. Is the BMW M140i the best hot hatch you can buy for 20 grand? I'm gonna look around the outside, the inside, go for a drive and talk performance in the hope that I can answer that question. If you've got 20 grand in your pocket, should you buy an M140i? Let's go. So let's start with the front. As you can see, you've got the iconic kidney grills. These ones are black. They're not standard black, but these ones have been upgraded to black. And you have actually got this Maxton design spoiler, which looks pretty, pretty cool. And um, you've also got the iconic BMW light at the front. And as you can see, the M140i is kind of set up quite aggressively. So you've got nice lines at the front. You've got nice lines down the side. And as you move to the side of the car, we've got the 18 inch M performance wheels. These are the standard ones. And you've got the M performance side skirts, which are an optional extra. As you come down to the side, you've got the nice crease lines. We've also got these carbon mirrors, which are, they are extras, they're not standard, uh, but they do look like those M3, M4 competition ones. So they've got a nice little curve to it and they look pretty, pretty cool. And as we move to the back of the car, firstly, we've got a nice wide stance. We've then got a Maxton design rear splitter, which is an extra, it's just one of the many, many accessories you can get online. But we have got a BMW Genuine part, which is a M performance exhaust. It's brilliant and it sounds fantastic. <laughs> Just jumping into the boot, it's got 360 litres of storage in there, so you can see the Golf Club fit perfectly. Also, the battery and the first aid kit is in the back, so it's nice and easy if you do break down. Now, one thing to note before we move on to the inside is this is the three-door variant. Now, there are lots, lots more five doors, and yeah, arguably they're more practical and they're easier to use, but I think the three-door just looks a little bit more stylish. And so as we jump onto the inside of the M140i, you're greeted by standard German build quality. So you've got a nice leather wrap steering which feels nice in your hands. You've got soft touch plastics on the dash and on the sides of the doors. And everything feels nice and sturdy, nice and well built. Nothing's kind of creaking or gonna make you fall off in a minute. Yes, you've got analog dials in this car, but you know, and then if you look at like a 2020 or 2021 year model car, you're probably gonna see a virtual cockpit. So maybe that might feel a little bit outdated, but don't worry, it tells you your speed and you've got a nice sensory display unit in the middle, so it doesn't really matter. You've got standard control units in the middle for air conditioning and actually they're not hip haptic kind of touch buttons there. It's just nice and easy to use. So we've looked at the outside, we've looked at the inside. Now let's jump in and let's go for a drive and I'll tell you all about the performance and what this car is like to drive. So the M140i has got a three litre six cylinder engine producing 335 brake horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque. The three litre propels the car from 0 to 62 in 4.6 seconds, all powered from the rear wheels. So I don't drive lots of BMWs in my channel. Actually, this is the first ever BMW I've had on the channel. And one thing I always pick up is the steering wheels are so soft. The leather is just really nice and comfortable in your hands, which I guess on all journeys is, is lovely. But as I said, I don't drive BMWs a lot and the M140i is a performance car. It's a hot hatch, so it's supposed to be the top of the range, you know, the, the hardcore hunkered down version. It's actually really comfortable. In We're in comfort mode at the moment and I'll just be cruising along, happily do this all day, every day for my commute. But I have got sports mode, which if I want to have a little bit more fun, you can, and you press that, the car sounds louder, the gearbox changes quickly, and ultimately it just sounds pretty awesome. So fortunately the M140i doesn't feel too big or clunky. We're going around an airfield at the moment and it feels very nimble and light and it doesn't feel like it's a big cumbersome car, which let's be honest, on a hot hatch, you want it to feel nimble and light. You want it to enjoy it. It's also got creature comfort. So it's got automatic lights, it's got cruise control and it's got air conditioning. So, you know, you're not gonna be disappointed that you're uncomfortably driving the car every day. This car's got the standard suspension set up, so it hasn't got active dampeners, and it has got the 18-inch alloys, but these are, these are wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, like my car, and they're brilliant tires. Uh, so yeah, this, this is well worth the setup. It's nice and comfortable. Having smaller wheels just means that it's much more easy to use. It's not as clunky. The road noise, the, the potholes, just aren't as loud as they, they can be. So when you pop it into sport, you have this central display unit, which tells you things like power and torque. 
and you should I've just put a camera on the back you should just hear be able to hear the the engine how it sounds also got paddles so if you want to change manually you can change manually sometimes you just can't beat a three liter engine yes you know the smaller output engines like the the four cylinder turbocharged engines like I've got in my Cayman yes they're great and you can get lots and lots of power out of it potentially even more than the, the 335 brake horsepower in this car but you can't get that noise, can you? You can't get that big engine sound. And that's one thing that if you're looking for a car that sounds great, and also one of the last of the great sounding engines, this is probably the one to get. So fortunately about this car, because it has got that big engine, it has got some crackles and pops, but they're not like artificial, like my mini John Cooper works were, which were kind of crazy, like gunshots. A little bit more subtle, it kind of sounds like it's supposed to be there, like it's a, a performance sound, which is good. I'll try and see if you can, you can hear them in a, in a minute. actually brutal as well when it's in sports mode as well and it changes gear you do feel that kind of clunk which is nice because it, it just feels like it's mechanical and it's kind of engaging with you which is really, really nice to hear so one thing to note about the BMW is that all the power goes through its rear wheels which means it does get a little bit skitty now today is actually quite a dry day but in the wet just be be super super careful because it is so easy just to spin this car around but ultimately it also gets that little bit of excitement to it the Michelin Cup Sport tyres do help but they're not gonna save you, so just take care. So on these more twisty roads, we're in sport mode now, and it just was a little bit more taut, a bit more, I don't know, just egging you on to go a bit faster. Um, actually, funnily enough, we were going quite fast then, and I didn't actually realize it's very easy to go fast in this car. So in change down, oh, that sounds so good. I can't tell you how sound good it sounds, but actually, the sound deadening in this car is, is very good. We're on a private road now, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop and just see what it's like in a straight line going from start. So I don't care if there's launch control because I think it's always a bit dodgy to do that with cars, so I don't want to do that. But I'm just going to slowly do it and see, see kind of how it feels. Oh, God. My God. Oh, even in a dry, a dry day... It still wants to spin its reel. I just saw that little light come up saying, kind of flashing, saying I'm going a bit too recklessly. But, oh God, I just, it feels really good. Oh, just that. That is so, I'd have to do that every day if I was driving this car. The gearbox is really, really good. It's really responsive. Obviously, you know that I drive the, the 718 Cayman, so the PDK is super, super crisp. It's so quick. This is really good. This has really impressed me so far because it doesn't feel like it's, you know, outdated. It doesn't feel like it's slow. This 2017-year-old car feels great. Feels really, really good. Oh, so you've just had some drive-bys on the car and it does sound so, so good. But in terms of running costs, what are we looking at? Well, if you look at the Honest John MPG on this car, you're looking at around about 30-ish, 31 miles per gallon. Today, I've averaged 27.8. Yes, I've been driving a little bit kind of erratically, but actually that's pretty good miles per gallon. If you are on a, a longer journey, then around 30, 
you know, if you're 31, 32, it's probably going to be achievable. In terms of servicing cost, an oil change will cost you about £150. Uh, going up to an oil change with some filters will then probably cost you about 250 And then over 300 if you want to have the full service with spark plugs and all the filters and the oil and everything like that, which, you know, on top isn't too bad. Obviously, it's, it's worth looking at. And if you jump onto the BMW website, you can put a registration in, fill out your details, and it will show you what the costs are. So jump on it and have a look. Rotax is £155, obviously you can do that direct debit or, or as one-off fee, but again, for a three litre, can't really complain, can you? I mean, I, my car's about 450 and it's got a little tiny two litre, so, you know, you can't complain. This car, what surprised me is that although it's, you know, really loud outside, inside, super quiet, I don't have to shout to you guys, and actually, as you want to use one every day, which I probably would and most of you are going to, yeah, it's perfect, really, really quiet, which is nice. My God. So obviously the power's there, yes, but when you come and kick into that 500 newton meters of torque, the car just wants to pull you and pull you forward, and that's probably the big engine that's doing that. So if you are a motorway cruiser, you know, you're gonna be sitting there at 70 on the outside lane waiting to come past. That torque is gonna to be there, and it's gonna be instantaneous, and it's gonna be it's gonna be really, really good. Um, we are just in an industrial park now, and I'm in sport, and yes, a little bit clunky, but if I just pop it into comfort, again, it's just super, super soft and simple. And that's one of the things that's nice about a hot hatch. Yes, you know, you can get those ripped out hardcore hot hatch cars, but if you've got kids, you know, if you've got a partner and he or she is, you know, in the back seat, you don't want to be clunky around all the time and you go out for dinner or go to the movies. You want to be comfortable. And then, yes, you might want to have a bit of exuberant driving at some point. And yeah, then you pop it into sport and enjoy that. But on the day to day, the majority of people buying this car are going to want to be just cruising about. Again, I want to say a big thank you to Aaron who's lending me this car today, who is in the seat next to me, uh, and it's really nice of him to, to give me this car for the day. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. I really enjoyed it, and so uh, let's just pull up and we'll have a quick chat. So guys, that has been the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it's answered some of the questions out there of if you do have £20,000, should you buy an M140i? This is one of the last real-wheel drive big engine hot hatches you can buy in today's world, so why not go for it? Make sure to subscribe to the channel to see many, many future videos to come. But for now, I'll see you very, very soon. I've got the time.